in dealing with pastoring, and my wife will tell you that um, I was pastoring back in Ohio before we moved up here. And when we moved up here, my goal was not to pastor again. I don't, I don't have to pastor. I'm a, um, if Dr. Harrington was here, he'd tell you I'm a great follower. Um, moving into the position where we were at Third Baptist Church, I just wasn't satisfied with the respect level that I received. In particular, um, Reverend Crawford would tell you we were down there. I would be down there five days a week on some occasions. And um, one thing that I've learned, I learned from my father, is that people should respect your efforts. And y'all all know that I give 100% of what I do. And, um, so because of that, um, I submitted my resignation. I prayed about it. And... The Lord has led me, and I've gotten more signs about this than you could ever possibly imagine. Me and my wife, we were all at dinner yesterday, um, me uh, and my children, and the mayor of the city of Taylor was there, and he walked out. I shared it with Monique. He walked out, and I said hi to him. He said hi to me, but after he got out and got home, he sent me a text. And he apologized because he said he didn't come over and speak with us and talk to us. That's my relationship that I have with the people in the city of Taylor. Mm -hmm. um, the city of Taylor has a need for a ministry here. Um, they have large churches. They have large churches here, very large churches. And I have been to a couple of them on a couple of occasions. But um, the Lord has led me. That is right, Keegan. The Lord has led me to, <laughs> to start this ministry here. Um, I'm comfortable with the way things are going right now. I didn't want that many people in here anyway. That's just me. Um, I believe you start with a core group of people. We'll learn that in our sermon today. And with that core group of people, you build from there. And um, anything that grows fast, I learned this from a doctor that I know, a pastor that I know. He says anything that grows fast in a body is a cancer. Mm -hmm. So ministry is about relationships. And I'm surrounded by people that I love here today. So because of that, I'm thankful for all of you. Um, I pray to God that uh, you see the vision and you involve yourself in the vision. Even with my daughters, I know they stay in Ohio. But if any, they get an opportunity to come up, which you all know I come down here and preach on a regular basis uh, down in Canton. And I'm getting ready to start doing that again. Um, uh, but I appreciate everybody's support. And I thank God for all of you. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, we thank Sister Roby because uh, me and Reverend Crawford were just talking again. For any great man, he's got to have an even greater woman with him. Mm -hmm. And Monique has stepped up to the plate at a level that she had never done in Third Baptist Church. Partly because of the spirit that was there. And, and yeah, she's shaking her head because she knows what I'm talking about. Because this is a spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. And because it's a spiritual battle, um, if you're not protected, if you're not covered, you can grow weary and you can grow tired. And I grew tired at Third Baptist Church. So just pray for them. Uh, I would never want to leave another house of God in a situation that they are in. But a lot of it has to do with how they're treating the people that come in those doors. Mm -hmm. uh, for this ministry, we accept all people. Yeah. We're going to accept all people. If somebody walks in the door and they are dressed, which y'all know, I don't normally wear a suit anymore. I don't, because I want people to see me like you would see me if I'm at the store. God is is for imperfect people. And nowadays, the church is full of perfect people. And because of that, I can't be involved in that. So I thank everybody. I appreciate you. Um, Jasmine, Khalid, boys, I appreciate y'all. Um, and I'm glad that you're all here to join us for this journey for this ministry, because that's what it is, a ministry. When you think of the word minister, it is a table where you, you provide a service. It's not about all this other stuff you see going on and TV and all of that. It's not. And I'm going to show you in the Word of God today. Um, I know the normal format for, for Easter Sunday, for Resurrection Sunday, is to go into the one of the four Gospels and to preach and give that normal narrative. And we all know that Jesus Christ got up. I mean, if you're here today, you know he got up because I've told you. Uh, on that third day morning, he got up. He got up with all power in heaven and in earth. And we know that he went uh, several weeks later. He returned back to his father. And he left these disciples, these, these apostles. And he left them a mission. 
That same mission he left with them is for us also. The difference is, is that they were apostles. They saw Jesus. They walked with him. They lived with him. They saw him dead. They saw him alive. Amen. The difference is, is that we still have that same commission and we need to do what we're supposed to do. Amen. Amen. So we're going to get started. This is interactive look. If y'all want to be involved in the service, please be involved in the service. Um, I'm going to get Khalid involved and the Reverend Crawford is going to get him involved if they don't both mind. Uh, because somebody's going to give us a call to worship, and then someone's going to give us an invocation prayer, and then um, Jasmine's going to sing at some point. Am I right, Jasmine? Yeah. She's going to sing at some point. Uh, Brianna was back here talking about she was going to catch the Holy Ghost. I know it was loose. I was like, oh, I was like, oh, we're not. And I have a mask on, and me and Jordan both looked at each other like, no, not today. But if this, this is worship. This is when you go in the Bible and you look at worship back in biblical days. It was in houses. Mm -hmm. It was in small, intimate settings because at that point, Christianity, Jesus Christ, had not grown to a point where it was accepted amongst the masses. So they had to hide themselves in these small areas. Now we're not hiding. Um, it just so happens that we're here. We're in this uh, this conference room, and I chose this one because it's closer to home. And because I know the layout, um, the ministry there, look, the, the harvest is plenty, the laborers are few, and there are a bunch of people that I know in this immediate area, myself, Sister Roby, and uh, when the Lord really moves, you will see just how much a true, honest, integral, integrity-filled ministry can do and for such a time as this today. Amen? Amen. So we get started, somebody's going to open us up, uh, Reverend Crawford's going to open us up. And then we go from there. Um, I myself, um, when I'm preaching, I will take my mask off. Otherwise, I'll keep my mask on. I have had my shot. Um, and because of that, um, you know, but we just still will make sure we practice social distancing, which is why you don't see a whole bunch of people in here. Because had I invited everybody, co-workers, then we wouldn't have had no room here. Uh-oh. Where's Keith? I was sitting on the so we're going to have a call to worship the Reverend Crawford. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Can everybody understand me with this mask on? Okay. Yeah, I just want to. Uh, the call to worship this morning comes from Ephesians chapter 3. And I'm going to start at verse 14. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That ye may be rooted and grounded in love. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and height. And to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. That ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, to, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask to think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory to in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader and hear of his word for the good and application of our soul. And I'll do the invocation for it. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, Lord, we thank you. And Lord, we love you. We thank you for being God all by yourself. Lord, we gather uh, here this day, Lord, with an understanding, Lord, that uh, your house, we are your house. Your son is the body, Lord. We make up um, that, Lord. So because of that, Lord, we gather here this day, Lord, in what others might call a conference room. But today, for this purpose, Lord, we call it your sanctuary, your house, Father. Amen. So, Lord, right now, we pray over this room, we pray over this building, Lord, with an understanding, Lord, that you can see all and you know all and your spirit is everywhere. So we pray for your spirit right now in this place, Lord. Uh, Lord, we pray for discernment. We pray for understanding. We pray for love. We pray uh, for uh, your overall comfort and care over us as we gather here. Not only here, Lord, but Lord, uh, as I see now, Lord, there are houses that are being used. There are uh, buildings, Lord, that uh, 
used to be bars, Lord. There are so many places that are now being called your house, Lord. So because of that, right now, we pray in your son Jesus' name, Lord, that you would bless them, Lord. And, Lord, we pray that your spirit is evident and obvious in those places, even here, Lord. Uh, Lord, we pray for sanctuaries in this uh, neighborhood, in this city, in this state, in this country, and in this world that are open today to celebrate the resurrection day of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord. Uh, Lord, we thank you for him most of all, Father, because he saves us from our sins. And if we just turn to him and, and, and accept him, in his name, Lord, you will forgive us of our sins. So one day when we return to you, Lord, we will spend eternity with you. We thank you for the children, Lord, because they are the church of today. So guide them, Lord. Uh, teach them, Lord. Help us as parents, Lord, that we uh, parent over them, Lord, with an understanding that they're yours. And you have given us the responsibility to watch over them. We thank you, Lord. We love you. Uh, but most of all, we thank you for your son Jesus. He is our resurrected Savior. For it is in his name that we pray. And all of God's children all together say amen. 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 Um, I'm going to touch the speaker on for her saying. So we're thankful. Um, like This is not going to be a long service because I'm not planning on being here preaching long. Um, preaching, teaching. Amen. And then after, uh, after we're done with service, uh, we will be administering the Lord's Supper. Amen. This amen. is the first Sunday. And I am a preacher pastor. And because of that... Uh, we are going to participate in the Lord's Supper as you should always do uh, in remembrance of Him. Amen.
all have gifts, and, and whatever those gifts are, we should use them for the edifying of the body. Amen. My mother, which y'all know, the majority of y'all, y'all heard my mom. Y'all heard your grandmother sing before. Mm -hmm. And she she has devoted her life to that gift, which is why I do what I do. Because I'm like, if she can sing, which I can't, then the least I can do is do whatever God has called me to do. We're learning this in our lesson today. So we thank God for you. We love you. Uh, I'm going to get started with the sermon. Uh, y'all know how we normally start with our words. So I ask somebody to please stand up um, and repeat after me. All scripture. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable. And it's profitable. For doctrine. For doctrine. For reproof. For reproof. For correction. For correction. For instruction. For instruction. In righteousness. In righteousness. That the man of God. That the man of God may be perfect. May be perfect. Thoroughly furnished. Thoroughly furnished. Unto all good works. Unto all good works. And for all of you in the bulletin, you see the lesson inside of the bulletin. And um, if I might, I would just call to your attention to just verse number 39. Amen. Verse 39. And there you will find these words. For the promise. Oh, I'm sorry. Y'all, is it in there? No. Okay, well, open your Bibles. Open your Bibles. Get on your phone. I know y'all have y'all phones. Keep your phone on because we're going to have somebody in there phone in a while. I mean, we're in a, in a world now where the phone, you have Bibles in. Go to www.biblegateway.com, and when you go there, go and hit, um, uh, when it has, uh, put it in the King James Version, when you get to the King James Version, then hit the drop down and go to the Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles. If you have your Bibles with you, then open your Bible up. We're going to Acts. The Acts of the Apostles. And we're going to chapter 2. Chapter 2. Okay? And, and I want to make sure, look, I'm a teacher. And, and that's something I want to make sure is a foundation, foundational principle of what I do. I'm a teacher, and I'm teaching you. So on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, when you're going through it, because Satan is not happy that you're here right now. He's not happy that this ministry is starting. He's not happy that I'm going to continue to preach. And because of that, we use the Word of God as our source of inspiration and as our shield from those darts and those things that Satan and his gift will throw at you. Amen. 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 So Bible Gateway, that's a great place there. Uh, we're going to the Acts of the Apostles. And I would just like to bring to your attention just one verse. That's verse number 39. Does everybody have it? Yep. Amen. And it reads, For... The promise is unto you. And to your children. And to all that are afar off. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. Amen. Then you may receive it. How many of you have come to terms with the fact that um, you're going to die. <laughs> My Jordan tell you because she always tells me, you need to not think so morbid. <laughs> because I'm, I'm, I'm always thinking about my death. Not only is it my death, but I'm thinking about what am I leaving for my children. I'm thinking about what am I leaving for my wife. One of the reasons why uh, it was easy for me to not to, to stay with the Third Baptist Churches because um, I've seen pastors where they are in a church where the people are resistant and it will almost take lives off of the pastor's year fighting with these people. Mm -hmm. And I'm confident in what I do now to a point that I know Khalid that Everything's going to be all right with my family. Amen. Yeah. I'm confident. I, I'm confident. Um, I've taught my daughters. I've taught my sons um, who Jesus Christ is. I, I, there, may very, there are a lot of things that I haven't taught my children. Um, all of them have dealt with very like stepfathers and so on and their moms, but they will always say that I've taught them about Jesus. Can I say that? Can I say that, Brianna? 
Um, Jaden, can I say that? You remember when we moved up here, your church and everything, and all, and, and, and Jordan, you remember your whole day and, and everything, and, and then, then what? We went to church. Because, and, and get this, I'm not doing this because I'm smart. I'm doing this because, Joey, this is what I was taught. You, you know, your family, y'all, y'all go to church. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Khalid, there's Jasmine, Monique, even with you, we all have to understand that we are to leave something on this earth and we leave it in our children. Uh, we leave it in those that follow us and we leave it. And, and I know there are some, some murmurs of people in my family where they don't necessarily believe in, in the Jesus that I believe in. But the Bible says, train them up in the way they should go, and when they grow old, they will not depart. So because of that, I'm confident that the training as a parent that you put in your children, it, 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 there's proof to it. There, it's, it's valid. It is is reliable. And particularly when you deal with Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is reliable. I don't, look, I don't mind children in church, because if you don't have children in your church, then you have a dead church. You know? Period. So... I, don't know, I always tell a story. I'm going to continue to tell it. I used to crawl from the back of the church to the front of the church up under the pews, Jordan. I did that too. <laughs> so he's short bus like me too. I like that. <laughs> so we, we, we have a responsibility to teach those that come after us. Amen? Does that make sense? Amen. We have a responsibility to teach those that come after us. And it's all tied to a promise that God made to all of us. Amen? So, if I might, I'm going to just preach for a little while for the precepts to the promise. Amen? Precepts. The, precepts. the steps to this promise. How do we get there? Uh, we all know, like, uh, praying. What's the first prayer that we would talk? Anybody? The Lord's Prayer. Jesus oh, Lord. Lord. Look, the first prayer. God Jesus Lord. Lord. God said God is great. Well. God said God is great. Well. Well. <laughs> and even before that, you remember the first one, Jesus wept. Well. 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 Uh -huh. Right? So it's a learned behavior. And then after we get God is great, Jesus wept, well. God is great, God is good. Then we get to a point where our prayer becomes, uh, and I have my Bible, I saw it earlier today, that I got when I was a young child, they teach us the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Lord, 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 and we use not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever. Amen. And um, children, Monique, how many of y'all have had the opportunity where we just pray together? I mean, I know me and you have, Jordan, where we just touch hands and we pray. We just pray for specific things. And I've always taught y'all that. I've always taught people that, Khalid, that, you know, there's power in prayer. Mm -hmm. Because there's power in prayer, Reverend Crawford. Uh, we learn how to communicate with God so when dad is gone, when mom is gone, when grandma is gone, we have that inside of us. Because you know you're the teachers of the prayer now. Amen. I mean, what, Jada, how are you, 27? 26. 26, and Brianna, you're 30, and Jordan, you're 31, right? So you're the parents now. How are you? How are you? I'm 27. 27, Jasmine, how are you? 27. So y'all parents now, right? And as parents, it's your responsibility to teach your children. Now, I'm going somewhere with this because everything that we learn about Jesus Christ, we learned it from somewhere. And most, most likely, as children, we learned it from our parents. And then we got Bibles. And once we got Bibles, we started learning to read the Word of God. So when you're all by yourself, Brianna, and there's no one around you, and you don't know who to turn to, if you could just turn to God, if you could just have one scripture, one thing. Now, my grandmother, my mother's favorite... Uh, um, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not unto thine own understanding, and all of the ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. There are, those are the things that, as a family, y'all talk about getting married, these are things y'all need to teach y'all's children. So we learn about this man named Jesus. Um, we, we laughed about it yesterday because we called them CME members. Christmas, Mother's Day, Easter. and Easter. And their churches are filled today. Well, lightly because of COVID. But churches, Reverend Crawford, have a lot of people in them right now. Mm -hmm. And they're there because it's Easter and it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. To go to church on Easter. You get your new suit. You get your, your fresh new short right. and shacks. And, and, you, and you get to be clean, you know. And what do we do that next week? Okay. Most people don't even go to church that day, do they? They don't. They don't. They don't really understand that this is a. This is. Look. This is a. This is a mission. 
This is tied to something that God has promised to us. And we need to learn what to do the next day and the next day until we get to Mother's Day, until we get to the birth of Christ. We need to learn these things and it's a learned behavior and we have a place where all the learning started. Amen. Amen. Which brings us to our text today. Um, I'm coming from the book of Acts and for those of you that haven't been in the book of Acts, uh, I'm just give you a quick, very, very low level understanding of the book of Acts. It's written by Luke. Luke is a physician. Luke uh, was not with Jesus Christ. But Luke went and was around the people that were the men and women that were with Jesus Christ. Uh, he is attributed to the authorship of the Luke, uh, Luke, the gospel according to Luke. Not only that, but he is also giving credit for writing the Acts. And people just call it Acts. But it's not it's the Acts of the Apostles. Yes. Well, who were the apostles? Well, I'm going to help you to understand who the apostles are. If you have your Bible, turn your Bible and turn it to the Gospel according to Matthew to chapter 10. The Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 10. First book of the New Testament. First book of the New Testament, thank you. At the back, Pastor. The Gospel, and I, I want to show you all this. And, you know, look, it, it's not often I get to preach to my children, so I'm going to be here for a while. <laughs> so just so y'all know the gospel according to Matthew and then somebody read verses 1, verse 2, verse 3 and verse 4 because I want you to understand who the apostles are Okay. Um, the gospel according to Matthew if you don't have it just listen if you don't have it just listen Matthew 10 verse 1 through 3 yeah 1 through 3 one through, yeah. okay uh, this is New International Version Jesus called his 12 disciples and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits, and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who was called Peter, his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, his brother John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphys, and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, Isaac, who betrayed him. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, if we ever want to find out where the twelve apostles, where the names of the apostles are, where do we go? Matthew 10, verses 1 through 4. The gospel according to Matthew. I'm teaching. I just want to make sure we get there. Because there are people that don't know. Amen. So you go to the gospel according to Matthew, and you get a list of them. Now, when you look in the book of Acts, and the Acts of the Apostles, the first chapter is tied to the fact that Jesus has told them that they all need to return to Jerusalem. And when they return to Jerusalem, he tells that they're going to receive the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm really condensing this for y'all. And... They went in, and while they were together, they went in, and because Judas had committed suicide, they chose another one to bring the number back to 12. And the lot fell on Matthias. Am I right? Matthias. That's who it fell on. Barnabas. It was Barnabas and Matthias. It was between the two of them. But the lot fell, and when it fell, they chose the one. And now, now let me make this point. The Lord had already chosen somebody to be that 12th apostle. Anybody know who it was? The Apostle Paul. Yeah. Now, the 11 that were remaining besides... Well, Judas is gone. Judas yeah. committed, committed suicide. Yeah. So we have the 11 and they are all together in one place. Okay? I'm moving to chapter 2. And when they are in one place, the Spirit of God falls upon them. When the Spirit of God falls upon them, there are some things that are being done by miracles of God to show that it is the Spirit of God that is in fact, that has arrived on them. And that is that they begin to speak in tongues. Now, if you go in and you read chapter 2, you will see, and, and there is a misunderstanding about tongue in, in the church today. Now, in dealing with this example that we're giving in the Word of God, it is because all of these people have come to the Pentecost. The Pentecost was roughly four weeks after the celebration of the Passover. And as they are there, the Spirit of God has fallen upon them. Now, if you read right around in, in, in the chapter 2, right around verses 6, 7, 8, somewhere in there, it begins to name all of the people and from all of the cities where they're from. And because of that, you get an understanding that very likely they all spoke different languages. Mm -hmm. Now, 
the Lord allowed the Spirit of God to come in and these people began to speak in languages that they should not be speaking in. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And when the people see this going on, they're marveled at it to a point where they say, these people must be drunk. I'm running by this real fast and I apologize for that. Take your time. And Peter stands up amongst them all and begins to preach the first sermon about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. So that's Amen. You remember that because that's when you see the first sermon of Jesus Christ, and you're gonna hear that again. It's gonna be a question for you, son. So they begin to go in and listen to Peter as he delivers this sermon about a man named Jesus. Now the first point I want to make is, is Jesus to his friends was, he was an amazing man. But he was their friend. In the text you will see where on numerous occasions it says this Jesus. Because remember when Jesus had the disciples, the disciples thought that Jesus was coming to be a great conqueror. And exactly, that's what they thought. They thought he was coming in with, with a, a, a military force. And look, he had the ability to do so because um, the night of the crucifixion, you remember he went in when he was betrayed and he told uh, told Peter, look, Peter, all I got to do is call my dad. I'm paraphrasing. And he will send down a legion of angels. So he had it, but he understood that it was not about what he wanted to do. It was about his father's promise to send a Messiah. Amen. Amen. So we see where Peter begins to preach this sermon. And I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna run through this. But I want to go to verse number thirty-one, and he says, "He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption." And what he's talking about, Peter, uh, what Peter is talking about is Jesus Christ, the fact that his body did not decay. He was not left in hell. Because remember, when you go back to the, to the Gospels, Jesus Christ fulfilled everything that was written of the Messiah, written of the Christ, and because of that, he died on Calvary, and he filled the purpose, when you go into Hebrews, it explains it, where not only was he the Messiah, but he became the priest of all priests, where he was able to do what the priests before him were not able to do. He was able to go in and to make all of the sacrifices for all the sin by one death, whereas nobody had to go back and forth anymore and do these sacrifices once a year. Amen. He did it one time. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about the prerequisites of the prophets. Amen. Amen. So my first point is, is that there is proof of there's proof of the, the proceedings. So everything that Peter is talking about in this sermon, prior to getting to verse number 31, there's there's proof of it. Well, how do we know there's proof? Look at verse number 32. It says, This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. So everything that he's talking about. They are able to go in and to validate. Now, when you go in and you study about Jesus Christ and his resurrection, you understand that more, more than 500 people saw Jesus alive. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. More than five, you can find that in 1 Corinthians. More than 500 people. Now, we're talking about back in biblical days, okay, where cities roughly had maybe 100, 200 people, not that many people, over 500 people saw Jesus alive after they crucified him. Mm -hmm. And everything that Peter is talking about in his sermon, that his body did not rot and all of that, it, it's, there are people that are witnesses of it. Now, let me make this point. If there are people, um, how many of you were at Pearl Harbor? Anybody? None of, nobody in here was at Pearl Harbor. Well, how do you know Pearl Harbor happened? Somebody told me. I read it in the book. Somebody told you about it. They read it in the book, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, how many of you were alive for the Black Plague? Anybody? Okay, let me ask this question. So, a hundred years from now, they're going to ask the question, how many of you were alive for COVID-19? Oh, there, boy, that was a bad time. I'm sorry. <laughs> and we won't be around. But it will be written documentation that it happened. Jesus Christ, and look, all, all historians tell you there was a man named, named there was a man alive named Jesus. Uh -huh. 
There was. Yeah. Amen? Yes, sir. And Peter's telling him, look, we saw him. We saw him. And that's, that's what marvels me on how people can't believe in Jesus. Now, there is always the argument about Jesus. Was he white? Was it, no, Jesus was Jewish. Was he black? No, he wasn't Jewish. I mean, he wasn't black. He was Jewish. Jesus was Jewish. He wasn't black. He wasn't black. He was of... Uh, from the, from the, from, uh, he was, look, he, they give his genealogy in the gospel according to Matthew. Amen. He was a direct descendant of King David, which we're going to learn about that a little bit later on. And 28 generations it took to go down from King David all the way to Jesus. God prophesied that he would come from the seed of Abraham. So how can you, how can you deny that this man didn't live. And then if you have a problem with the fact that you don't believe he was resurrected, over 500 people saw him then. They saw him alive. But people still dispute that. They dispute the validity of everything that he did. But yet here we are today celebrating something that people have made in the Easter with Easter Bunny, but we're celebrating his resurrection. Amen. 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 I hope I'm not boring. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. So, first of all, the first point is proof of the proceedings. Now, I've already explained to you that the Pentecost was the seventh week after Passover. And, and let me give y'all this because people miss this because this is the resurrection of Christ. Because when you read the Bible, you see where they call him Christ, and you see where they call him Jesus Christ, and you see where they call him Christ Jesus. You call, see where they call him Lord and Savior Christ. All of these different things, and you see where title is before the name, and name is before the title, and so on. And what it does is it establishes his hierarchy, it establishes his personal. It's, he was a man. Now, he wasn't. Christ Jesus until he died and was resurrected. And I just want to make that point for y'all. Let's keep going. So not only is there proof of the proceeding, there's proof of the promise. Look at verse number 33. It says, therefore, being by the right hand of God, exalted and having received the, fa the Father, the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this which ye now see and hear. Is that proof of you seeing you hear something? Anybody watching the George Ford case? The Floyd? Anybody watch? I don't know if you watch it. And see, there are some things that when you see them and when you hear them, that's proof, isn't it? I want to give you a chance. Right? Yeah. And people saw, and I mean, even with the George, because there are things like, and I brought that up because it gives you an ocular. And it gives you an audio understanding of seeing and hearing. And what Peter is talking about, he says, we've seen and you've seen these things and you've heard them. And because of that, now we were not firsthand witnesses to them. But Peter is telling you that, well, look, we're firsthand witnesses. And then he goes into this narrative over David. It's in the text. So the, first, the second point is, is that it's proof of the promise. Why? Because you now see and you hear. Now he goes into David and says, for David... Is not ascending into heaven, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thou uh, make thy foes thy footstool. Now I gotta make I gotta get an understanding of this because when it talks about a promise, what is a promise? A promise is when somebody honest says they're gonna do something. When they say they're gonna do something. Yeah. And, and, and from, from a biblical, biblical perspective, it means to announce that one is about to do or furnish something. Mm -hmm. So, is there a difference between a promise from me? Because I'm sure I've broken promises with almost everybody in here. <laughs> and a promise of God? Mm -hmm. God came by and he came back. That's so there's a difference. Is there a difference, Reverend Crawford, between a promise from us and a promise from the Lord? Yeah. And this is what this is all it's tied about because if the Lord does what he's going to say he's going to do for you, Brian, doing. then shouldn't you be obligated to do something for the Lord? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't you? I mean, come on, Joy. I mean, we say we believe in God. And um, I'll give y'all a story. I don't know how many of y'all know this. I don't know if my children know this. When I was around your age, and I'm going to cry when I say it. So. 600 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> when I was around your age, um, I went to my, uh, went to my grandmother. And my mom, because my grandmother had just passed. I said, how do I know if I'm supposed to be a preacher? I mean, that, that's, a, that's look, because I've had this on me for a long time. And 
And my mom says, well, let me tell you what my mom used to do. This is what my, my mom taught me. I'm talking about Grandma Bell. Y'all remember Grandma Bell? My mom said, my mother would always tell me to pray a specific prayer that only God could answer. It'd make it hard, too, for me. And that's what I did. I said, Lord, if you want me to be a preacher, I'm just going to preach. Huh. I want you to give me somebody to tell me these exact things. The Lord wants to use you. He wants to use you as a preacher. And all you need to do is get ready. So, and, and, and those aren't the exact words, but it was something similar. It was, it was, look, the words that I asked to be said were very particular. So, a couple of years later, I was at a church in South Carolina. Um, at that time, I was married to Christy, and Christy had gotten on my nerve. So, she was in a church sitting way up there, and I was in the back of the church sitting back here. And I was just sitting there, and somebody was singing. It was a great servant, Jasmine, and the preacher was preaching, and... I was sitting there and I was just praising God. I was just praising the Lord for everything. I was just praising God. That's what I was doing. And then I heard somebody say, you, young man. So I'm sitting there praising God. I'm looking. They still praising. I'm still praising. He said, you, young man, right there. So I opened my eyes up and I saw everybody staring at me. And I saw the preacher pointing at me. And he said, you ask God to tell you this. And I'm telling you right now as his messenger. I'm talking about when I asked God if I should be a preacher. And that man said exactly what I asked. The Lord. And I look, I was specific. I said, Lord, I want somebody that don't know me to tell me this stuff. And God answered it exactly the way that I wanted. So how can I not preach? And I'm telling you the same thing. Be specific in your prayers to God. And he'll do it. Amen. Why? Because I'm a first-hand witness that he'll do it. Because he did it for me. And if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. Amen. And that same story I'm telling you, you got to tell it to your children too. J.D., you got to tell it to Keegan when she's getting on your nerve. So there's proof of the promise, amen? For David is not ascended in heaven, but he has said, The Lord said unto my, unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy enemy thy footstool. Now i got to make this point right here because there is some parallel between this and some things that you see. Because uh, when you look at this word, footstool, he says, Make my foes, the people I battle against my footstool, and metaphorically... The footstool, it speaks of the practice of conquerors who place their feet on the neck of their conquered enemies. Now remember when you go in and you read in Genesis where it talks about Jesus Christ and it talks about him and the seed of the woman and the seed of Satan and how you're going to protect your foot and you're crushing your hand. And it speaks of David where it's making the enemy his footstool. In other words, what it's saying is, is that he crushes the enemy's hand. And David was speaking about his seed, which would come, would be, would be Christ Jesus. And through dying on Calvary, Jesus has defeated Satan. I'm going to say it one more time. Jesus has defeated Satan. Do y'all understand that? Amen. Yeah. So anything that you deal with from a demonic, from a satanic, or whatever it is, Jesus has already defeated it. So if you have Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have defeated it also. Amen. I was watching um, the Bible last night, Green, after I went home. And uh, Peter, before they led him away, because you know they crucified Peter upside down. Mm -hmm. He was steadfast in his faith in Jesus Christ because this earth right here is not, look, this, this, is, this is a temporary location for us. And what we do on this earth, and I know I'm getting all over the place, but what we do on this earth, we need to understand that this is not the end of it. It's not. Because there is a life that we will spend either with God or away from God. And it's all tied to how you deal with the things that you go through. Amen. Amen. I'm almost done. Let's keep it. So the first point is, is there's proof of the promise, the proceeding, there's proof of the promise, and not only that, 
But there's purpose to the promise. Look, he says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus. Here we go again. The same Jesus. And what it does is it helps us to understand that to Jesus and to his to Jesus and his friends, he was Jesus. He was just like me. He was, he was, he was Jesus. They saw one of their friends, the leader of their group, murder. He told them, look, this is, this is God's will that I'm, I get murdered for y'all, for your sin, sacrificed. And then they saw him alive. I'm going to say it again. And then they saw him alive. For, 40, for over 40 days, they saw Jesus Christ alive. They saw him dead. Because remember, today we're celebrating Easter, Resurrection Sunday. This is the day early, that third day morning, he got up. So they were all afraid. They were crying. They were mourning. George, oh, Jesus is there. And they saw him, and he was alive, Joey. And see, we miss, because, see, we, because of Christianity and because of people and how the world is and religion, we miss the full power of the fact that they saw him alive after the fact. Let me say it this way. DMX. Y'all know DMX is. Yeah. And they haven't pronounced him dead yet. But after they pronounce him dead, he's gone. He's gone with God. He's gone, judgment, all of that. Jesus Christ, he got up. Amen. Amen. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Amen. I'm almost done. Are y'all getting this? Oh, I'm getting this. So it's the purpose of the promise. So what is the purpose of the promise then? Because he made our enemies our footstools, right? He made your enemy, your footstool. Real proper. Your enemies. And see, people, that's why I tell people to be careful who you make an enemy with. Mm -hmm. And be careful who you are an enemy to. Amen. Amen. Because you start messing with the wrong person. Look, I'm confident that anybody that messes with me is messing with the wrong person. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because I'm for God. That, that's my life right there. Next week they're having something for my mom for my mom's birthday, Jordan. I'm probably not going because I have to be up here. And that's the that Khalid, I was telling Reverend Crawford, that that the that's the pro, that's the issue that we have as preachers. Mm -hmm. I, I I miss being, I told you, I miss sitting next to my wife in church. I miss it. Reverend Crawford, do you miss sitting next to your wife in church? Amen. But that is the burden of doing what you're called to do for Jesus Christ. Amen. There are some things that you just can't, you, you're going to miss out on. And people don't understand. Jeanette don't understand. But this is, this is about saving lives. Let's keep going. I'm almost done. So there's a promise, there's a purpose of a promise. And see, we all have different purposes. Y'all know that, right? Mm -hmm. How many of you know what God called you to do? I know three people in this room that can raise their hand. I know four that should raise their hand. Five that should raise their hand. But how many of you know what God calls you to do? What do you love doing? I keep telling Monique that. What do you love doing? Preaching. I love preaching. And I love preaching. Brenda, do you love singing? Yeah. Okay. Do you love singing, Jack? Yes. I mean, in, in all of these gifts, go in and learn the gifts. And I'm going to teach the gifts in this, in this ministry. So you learn what your gift is. You're, you're organizing. I mean, I'm just trying to help y'all to understand that. Look, there's room for all of us in the body of Christ. Contrary to what the world tells us. Contrary to what you see in churches today where you come into a church and they tell you, no, nah, we want you to do it. But no, that's not my gift. That's not what the Lord called me to do. I know what the Lord called me to do. Reverend Crawford, even after I had that, 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 that experience, that miracle that God gave to me where somebody told me what I was supposed to do, I would go to a church and say, the Lord called me to be a preacher. Oh, well, we want you to be in a choir. That ain't what the Lord called me to do. Amen. Okay. So there's purpose to the promise. God has a promise, and that same promise that he made to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, that same problem, promise that he made to Adam and Eve. Look, we fall under that promise. Mm -hmm. I, I know I've showed you before where in, in, in Genesis, uh, right around in the first three chapters, it says, and he blessed them. Mm -hmm. 
And that blessing that he gave to Adam and Eve back then is the same blessing we fall under. And I know that because it wasn't a one-time blessing. It is a type, the word is used where it is a continual blessing. And because of that, he blessed Adam and Eve, that blessing falls upon us. God's promise, y'all. How many of you know what God's promise is for you? How many of you know what God's promises are? Most of us don't understand what God's promises are, so because of that, we live a life minus the promises of God so we don't live it to its full potential. Look, I, I started this ministry, Reverend Crawford, because I know what God's promises are for me. Mm -hmm. Anything that I'll ask, he'll do it exceedingly, abundantly, above all I shall ask of you. That's what he'll do. And I'm not, look, I'm doing this for, 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 to save people. That's what I'm doing. I'm not doing it to be rich. I'm not. I don't need to be rich. We got a roof over our head. We got more than enough vehicles. We got, look, our, our seed don't beg for bread. Mm -hmm. Come on, Khalid, you know the blessings you've been had in the last couple weeks. You, you remember about four weeks ago and now what God has you at now. We have got to learn how to live with the promises of God. Yes, yes, yes. I yes. keep telling, look, man, if there's a thing you learn, learn how to pray to God. Yes. And learn, look, don't pray, don't, don't make these little, oh, Lord, I just prayer. want you. No, yes, be God. adamant about it. For God hears you. Yes. You know how I know he hears you? Because he hears me. And you're my seed. Yes. All of you. Amen. Mm. Are y'all getting this? Yes, sir. yes, sir. So there's proof of the proceeding. There were witnesses. There's proof of the promise. We heard it and we see it. There's the purpose of the promise. Not only that, there's the practice of the promise. So look, he says, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, who you have staked up, both Lord and Savior. So who made him both Lord and Savior? God did. I want to make sure, and i got to say this, please do not eliminate God when you talk about Jesus. Amen. Lord. People do it. They do it. They do it. And they eliminate the Holy Spirit also. Mm -hmm. Look, in order for us to get back right with God, we needed Jesus. Mm -hmm. And in order for us to function with the power of Christ, we needed him to go back to God the Father, and we needed the Holy Spirit, which... They had the examples of the Holy Spirit because they were speaking in tongues and then they went out and were performing miracles because of the power of the Spirit. Yes, yes, yes. Y'all get that? Mm-hmm. Got it. So now, if you need power to do something, you got the Spirit of God. That's why I don't worry. Can, can I tell my story, Brianna? You not get mad at me? <laughs> can I? You sure? Sure. Brianna called me. Dad, come get me. You remember that, Brandon? Mm -hmm. So, my wife would tell you, I hopped in the car, and it wasn't a long conversation with him. I said, I got to go get my daughter. I'm talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. Jumped in my car, and I went down to the city where she was supposed to be, supposed to be at. Went to the police station, and I talked to somebody in the, it wasn't the police officer, it was somebody in the police station that I talked to, I told the cop. And then somebody in there said, oh, I know who you're talking about. And she told the cop, and the cop said, oh, I think I know where they're at because I know where such and such is at. I'm talking about the power of God. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. And lo and behold, I went with them, and shortly thereafter, I found my daughter. Talking Amen. about the Spirit of God. Talking about the Holy Spirit. Amen. Found my child. Was I mad, Brianna? I wasn't mad because I found my daughter. How can I be mad when the Lord has moved to help me find my child? Amen. So don't omit the power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. That's what I was functioning when I was in another state. Amen. Liam Neeson. I'm having a child. I don't have money, but what I do have is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I didn't have anything. She wasn't answering her phone. What is that then? And I'm trying to make the point that if God is on my side, if God is for me, who can be against me? And I want y'all to function under the same power. Mm -hmm. Khalid, I want you to function under the same power. Amen. Let's keep going on. So, there is the proof of the proof of the proceeding. Remember, the proceeding, everything that happened, the proof was that they heard it. And they saw it, right? And then they, not only that, but they saw and they heard uh, that God had exalted Jesus Christ. 
and then he made the enemies our footstools. That's the purpose of the promise, so our enemies would be under us. And then there's a practice of the promise. He says, now when the, they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Mm -hmm. Huh? There's a practice. What shall we do? So now that you understand who Jesus Christ is, and see, this is for the multitudes here. Now that you understand who Jesus Christ is, and you understand there were eyewitnesses that saw him, what do you do with it? I mean, haven't you ever had that question? What am I supposed to do now, Lord? Come on, now, y'all all are uh, over 20 plus years old. Mm -hmm. Your parents now, you have careers, and your parents have raised you in the church. You say, what do I do now? You ever thought about that, Jacob? What do I do now? Am I supposed to take my kids and drag them to church like my mom and dad used to drag me to church? Because remember, they're talking to all of these people. Gentiles, Jews, all of these different nationalities. Because remember, they were all in Jerusalem for the, for the Pentecost. And they've seen all these people speaking in tongue. And Peter came in and put it all in perspective. They came in, they killed Jesus. Jesus was perfect in every way. They murdered him. And on the third day morning, God raised him from the dead. Mm -hmm. They say, well, what are we supposed to do with this now then? So, okay, we, you got our ear. We're listening. What do we do now? And see, this is where the world makes its mistake. This is where the church makes its mistake, Reverend Crawford. Mm -hmm. With all of this traditionalism, all this other stuff they got going on. People come in trying to figure out, what do I do now? And they're like, oh, we, we're not talking about that today because it's Women's Day today. We're not talking about that today because there was something that happened at the Capitol when I'm preaching about that. Mm -hmm. well, Jesus said, you likewise perish if you don't get your life together. That's what Jesus said. What do we do? Tell somebody. Look at it. It's in the text. I'm not making this up. <laughs> so there's the practice of the promise. So now that you understand the promise of God, you understand everything that God has done, look, this will preach. <laughs> He says, now then, they were pricked. So it, it, it got their heart. Has the word of God ever just gotten you where you just cry? Mm -hmm. All the time. <laughs> you just cry. You just in church. You're like, I don't know why I'm crying. And God is dealing with your heart because you know there are some things in your life that are not right. And you're saying, well, what do I, 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 okay, what do I do? Mm -hmm. And the question is, how often do they answer the question, what you do? You give me your tithes and your offerings, and then you oh. <laughs> make an appointment with the pastor, and we'll talk about it. What What do I do when I'm hurting right now? He said. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. You see that? And then what? Be baptized. To who? Every of you. So he's talking to the whole crowd. So the crowd has said, what do we do now? What is it that we're supposed to do? He said, you need to repent. You need to be baptized. He told it to the whole crowd. And he says, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You see that? So the fact that you have the Holy Ghost should make it evident that you have repented for the remission of your sins. Now let me say this. You're going to continue to sin the truth about it. I mean, if you don't believe so, look at, look, look, Satan can make a mockery of us when we forget who God is, who Jesus Christ is, and who the Holy Spirit is. You see it on a regular basis. All you have to do is look on TV with these Christian leaders, and lo and behold, you find out they didn't did this, they didn't did it, and you're like, what in the world? They need to repent again. They say, Lord, forgive me, I've sinned. Every, look, that needs to be a continual, Lord, forgive me, I have sinned. Now, when you make it your lifestyle, then you really have issues. Because then it's a, a prayer that falls almost on deaf ears because you keep doing the same thing. You keep doing it. The Lord's like, are you really serious with this prayer that you're bringing on to me? I'm almost done. So there's the practice of the promise. So the practice is that we repent. We're baptized for the remission of sins. Right? That's what it says right there. Yeah. And you shall receive the Holy Ghost. And then lastly, no, they, then there's 
there is the present slash presence of the promise. There's the present slash presence of the promise. And that promise is the Holy Ghost. It's right there. Right? Now, the Holy Ghost is not only a presence, but it's a present. Because it's a gift. Amen. It's a gift from God. So what God said is, is that because Jesus Christ died on Calvary for your sins and has returned to me, I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost. So you have the Spirit of God, you have the Holy Ghost with you at all times. Amen. Isn't that a good present to have, Joey? Isn't that, I mean, and, and if he's not with you, it's because you pushed him away. Amen. The whole look, <clears throat> and people will laugh at it. Some of the lowest rounds I've ever shot in golf could leave were because of the aid of the Holy Spirit. I'm just being honest. I'm, I'm being honest with you. I'm like, Lord, I need you to help me hit this ball up by the green and put it close. Now, yeah, practice comes into play, but I believe, look, I trust God for everything. Amen. I trust the Holy Spirit. For, look, Jordan, when I apply for a job, I, I, I trust the Holy Spirit. I, I, I have the favor of God where there might be 20 people more favored than me, Monique. Come on, Mo, you know what I'm talking about. But I got the Holy Spirit, and I'm walking in the Holy Spirit, so I'm walking around all these other candidates. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him the presence of great men. Uh, look, I, I understand that God has given me the gift, the presence of the Holy Spirit. And because I have the Holy Spirit, Joey, what, there's nothing that can stand in my way. That makes sense? Amen. So it is the present slash presence of the promise. And lastly, they're the people of the promise. The people of the promise. God's promises are to who? Who's God promised to? Uh, to us. To us. Mm -hmm. Not only to you, because I got to, and, and this is why I get tearful about it, because um, Eugene Bell, Reverend Eugene Bell, y'all know who that was? Anybody? My great-grandfather. That was my grandfather, Reverend Eugene Bell. You know whose father it was? Eugene Bell. That was your grandmother. Bell slash Roby's father. I never met him. Never met him. My mom was pregnant with me when her father passed. But I still feel him in me because of what this text right here says right here. Because he taught his daughters who Jesus Christ was. Now remember, look at their names. What was your grandmother's name? Jean Esther, what was her oldest brother's name? I'm giving you all a lesson now. Luke, what was his younger brother's name? John, what was your mother's younger sister's name? Ophelia, what was the sister under her name? Eva, May, what was the youngest daughter's name? Mildred. He named his children after people in the Bible. <laughs> Him and his wife. So they set that foundation. Because all of my aunts and uncles, they all, they all, look, I went to all of their funerals, except for Uncle Luke. I'm sure I went to Uncle Luke's, they probably took me. But I went to all of the funerals, and all of them were in churches. Can we say that for the people that we know now? Can I say that for my siblings? How many of y'all have church homes? I, I can't look. I'm look. I can't say it for David. Um, I can't really say it. I mean, Jeanette, I know she. I, I'm talking about me now, and I'm talking about what those that have come before me. Look, my father. All the bad things I say about my dad and everything. My father went to church. His last five years of his life, he was devoted to the group, to the ministry. Look at it, verse number. 39. For the promise is unto who? Uh, unto you. And to who else? Your children. To who? Children. To who, Jacob? <laughs> to your children? <laughs> Brianna, to who? My children. Monique, to who? To your children. And not only that, but if your children have children, how do I know that? Because it says afar off. Right? Because I won't see 
the chances of me seeing Keegan's child. It's not, it's, not, it's not good. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. And that's just by how long we live on this earth now. So if there's something that I can give you or if there's something that I'm giving you that God gave me, I'm giving you that promise. Repent. Be baptized. It's not only for me. It's for you. It's for your children. It's for your children's children. Because the way you see yourself, not look, Monique, we, look, Monique saw a picture of me when I was young. <laughs> she said, ooh. Where's that man? <laughs> what does that mean? I ain't gonna play it like that. But, but we age, Reverend Crawford. Not all of us stay 40, 40, what do you, what do you? 39. 39. Not all of us stay 39. We age. And because of that, we need to teach this same Jesus to our children. So our children teach our children's children. And children's children, children, infinite. Amen? Amen. Amen. The word of God has gone forward. I pray that you have been blessed. If you have not been baptized in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I invite you to get baptized. You all know me. I'm here for you, Reverend Crawford. And we're able to baptize. I'm confident that all of my children have been baptized. If you haven't, y'all need to come talk to Dad because we need your children baptized also when they are of age. Amen? Amen. We thank God for you. We love you. All hearts and minds are clear. Everybody good? Did everybody get something from the lesson today? Go ahead. Uh, we are joined. We're going to ministry. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. What do you mean? Come on, Pastor. The doors of the church are open for baptism. Um, they're open for uh, Christian ministry. They're open to restore yourselves. And then they're there, lastly, they're open to be a member of. Uh, and, and we're still working on the name, but it's under the parenthood of Roby Ministries because there's other businesses I'm functioning under this, amen? But we invite you to come to be a member. Uh, we invite you to come to be baptized. But most of all, we want you to be saved. Won't you please stand and please don't sing that song that we sing, Come to Jesus, if you don't have some savor to it. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Keep where you go. I'm trying to join too. That's the sign she talking. Come on, beautiful child. Be joining my church. <laughs> it's okay, bud. Sorry. You're trying to make me cry. And look, I don't. Okay. The parenthood of ministry, and it's just to have a minute. Look, we all need a church, and we have our, which Reverend Crawford has this lesson that's going to be online, and. I just need to go by the podium and all of that so we can start recording on minute. Yes, Amen. Yes, sir. So, um, Sister Roby just going to take a picture of everybody so I can write everybody's information down. Um, I got it. We got, we got four I got it. I got it. fill out. Everybody together. So, let me let me do this formal. So, Khalid and Jasmine, you're coming for, they're coming to be in the ministry. Yes. Sir. Amen. And Brianna, you're coming to be a part of the ministry. Yeah. Yes, Joey, you're coming to be a part. And I, she didn't force you to do it. No, 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 we did not. He's lying. Look at his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Jane, I'm like, I've been here before. You've been. So she's part and then Jordan Amber. Now let me say this. Let me say this. I want to make sure we're all on the same page. The steps that we make towards God are important steps. And I'll say it this way because. The things that God requires of you may seem like a lot. In particular, when it comes to giving your 10%. That's the biggest stickler when it comes to people joining the church. So they say, that church won my money. I don't need your money. The ministry does not need, I'm going to just tell you that. The ministry does not. This is an act of obedience to God to show God, look, Lord, I'm giving my 10%, and when I give my 10%, I'm doing what you require. It's about obedience. It's like Jada, where your daughter didn't want to listen to you. She wasn't being obedient the other day. And when they're not obedient, what happens? You have to go through some stuff until God gets you to be obedient. When I, was, when I wasn't a tither, I always 
had issues. I was like, why am I always broke? I'm just being honest with you. I'm like, why am I always broke? Do am I broke now, Mom? Damn. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 now, let me make sure I say this because I, I got to make sure because when people come into this ministry, I'm going to make sure you understand that because giving is the biggest issue people have with joining a ministry. They don't want to give. That's a learned behavior that you get from God. It is a process to it. You take that first step and say, all right, Lord, I'm going to try, just like my prayer was, I said, all right, Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust you for this. And then I started seeing the, the benefits of it. I told you all, the mayor of the city, yesterday, Look, I'm talking about, look, it may, not be Cam it may not be Cleveland, it may not be Detroit, but the mayor of the city knows my name. When I come to the city and tell them I want to get a building for a church, I'm going straight to the mayor. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to the mayor. That's what I'm going to. I'm going to say, Mayor, I need your help because I would like to have that church. Unless the Lord make it rich. Then you see, don't you? I'm going to get it. But that's the favor that God gives us when we learn to be obedient. And, and I will always tell people, it's hard for people to understand how to be tigers, so I always encourage them to start off softly. Say, okay, I'm going to just put that in. I'm gonna, and, and then you learn to grow to trust God, and when you learn to grow to trust God, you keep seeing your blessings grow. Come on now, y'all all know y'all blessed. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So I want to make sure I understand that, because at Third Baptist, I would tell people, do you, uh, do you promise to follow the lead of me as a pastor? Do you promise, promise to be a tiger? Da, 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 da. And then I wouldn't see anybody for the rest of their life because they wouldn't come back because they sat in front of the church and said yes. So I'm going to tell y'all, we're going to pray about it. And after we pray about it, then um, look, this is this ministry is new, but I've been preaching since I was 18. Alright, let's pray. Father God, Lord, we thank you and Lord, we love you. And Lord, um, we thank you for increase. Not only that, Lord, we understand this increase may be in separate places in different cities, but Lord, Help them, Lord, that wherever they are at, that they will be obedient to your word. Not only that, Lord, but show your favor over all of them, Lord. Show your favor over this ministry, Lord. Uh, we thank you for bringing us here. We thank you for this influx. We thank you for this increase. But most of all, Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus. He is our resurrected Savior. For it is in his name that we pray all of God's children. Amen. 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 Amen.